This is the mouth of the toe beak. It is a reel and it's in the key of G. And I there's an A, a B, and a C part. I'll go ahead and play through it. A, B, and C. Well, A, A, B, B, C, C. The key of G. And then we'll examine each part a little bit more closely for some special effects that you can do to make this tune extra special. But it does start with a pickup, which is problematic for bowings. So we're going to do a triplet pickup. Bottle it up. Just like the Adams family. <laughs> All in a down bow. And then most of this tune, I apply the Nashville shuffle to it. Um, okay, so let's just go with that. And here we go. Mouth of the toe beak, A part. Ready, set, go. Hard. Same triplet pickup. The A part, now the, the pickup can be handled several different ways. The pickup, I just choose to slur a triplet all in a down bow. But if you choose to, you can do just a single open D and just do a single note pickup. And that's cute. If it works out better for your bowings to do two D strings, then just shuffle your bow and do two open string the downbeat on your preferred bowing, which is a down bow. Okay, and then Nashville shuffle after that. Um, um, I'm using pinky finger to avoid inconvenient string crossings. It's not required, but it will help you play faster in the long run. Now, there's something, a cool effect that is specific to the A part where you have a skip of a third, like, um, from first finger to third, you can fill that, that one to three in with a little triplet. So that would sound like this. Again. Here. Uh, 
out. You could do it there. Ah. Doesn't work there that well there. But you can examine opportunities to do that cute triplet in the A part. I literally only do it between one and three on the A string when I perform it. And then again, it kind of matches the pickup note. So that's one trick for the A part. The B part has a unique trick specific to the B part. What was it? <laughs> um, well, you can put a slide on the first finger. Okay, on the measure I just got to, you can just fall straight down a scale to the F sharp. Normal, we, normally we go E, C, A, D. But you can fill in all those gaps, all those skips, with two fast triplets. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, da dun da 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 Okay, um, so that's a fun thing. Um, it's a much later trick and quite advanced. But on the very beginning of the B, instead of ya ba dum ba dum, we can hold that second finger and do a finger roll. So you end up playing this. That's all you're really doing. And you're doing a quick little roll. The roll is a finger above, back to the note, a finger below, back to the note. So, all in a slur. Try to do them all. Add one each time you repeat, and and don't start adding these ornaments until you have the basic bare bones really solid. If you do, it'll never be solid. You gotta have your framework just rock solid first, okay? The C part, the C part is way different than the A and the B. And I'm playing the A and the B with a real yep, dead up da up da up with a real hard swing, almost a hornpipe. And so then when we get to the C part, eh, you have to continue that. Mm, so what am I saying? I guess what I'm saying is when I play this song slow, I do a real hornpipe, yup, da up da up rhythm, but then it messes up the C part. I'll admit it. I shouldn't have been doing such a hornpipe rhythm. It's just irresistible on Mouth of the Tobique when you're playing slow. So as you get speed, smooth out the A and the B a little bit more. So it's not so yup, da 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 da, because the C part, if you're doing a hornpipe on the C part, It makes that hokum rhythm way harder and more confusing. You have to be a real expert of the hokum rhythm to be able to do hokum and a hornpipe lilt combined. So you're going to play the C part square because the hokum makes it unsquare. And that hokum rhythm is... And you just want to really accent every time you cross over to the A string, whack that note. Okay, and then so then 
once you get that rock solid on the C part, there's a cheap trick you can use that makes it sound 10 times more cool. And that is when you cross over to the A string to whack that note, don't quite leave the D string. Let the bow snag both strings because you're going to leave your left hand fingers down. And just your second finger is going to be alternating on the A string. Okay, please take my advice. Do not try starting any of this fancy stuff until you've learned the bowings and the fingerings of the bare melody before you start switching it up. Okay, now I'll go ahead and play it uh, one time through, maybe more, A, A, B, B, C, C, just kind of feeling free and doing whatever I feel like doing at the moment. One, and two, and ready, set, go. <laughs> fun with that tune. 